Hi, uh, today's talk is on Erlang Loss System. My name is Tim Ko, and um, the first question you should ask is, why should we study Erlang Loss System? The Erlang Loss formula actually has been with us for the last um, 100 years. And, then, and the reason why we're studying it is because it's still applicable not only in telephone network, but also in mobile networks. So um, with that reason, uh, we talk about uh, some background of, of Erlang. A.K. Erlang uh, was a Danish, and um, he works in the te Copenhagen Telephone Company in the 1910s. In 1917s, He's published a very well-known paper which gives rise to the early and last formula. And uh, I have some, some uh, professional connection with AK. So let me just share uh, a photograph. Okay, this is a younger me and with uh, my friend, Willie Everson. Willie is a Danish academic work in the local university, which is DTU Denmark, Technical University of Denmark. And we pay a visit to AK's grave. So if you look at this graveyard, this is uh, a share between his two sisters and his brother and his sister-in-law. And uh, which is quite common at the time, which the family shared a, a graveyard together. And AK is, was born in 1878, died in 1929, so he's about 51 years old. 51. So at that time in Europe, which is a very com common uh, age, the life expectancy was not that high. What's interesting is in this same graveyard, which is not very from, far from the central of uh, of uh, Copenhagen uh, is another graveyard for a famous Danish man. His name is Hans Christian, Hans Christian Andersen, XC Andersen. He is famous for his work. He's a children's author. His story books like Little Mermaid and uh, and uh, the Emperor New Clothes. In fact, he's more famous than AK. And uh, his grave is a, is a major tourist site. A lot, and if you see it today, you have fresh flowers, you have uh, a children's toy left on his grave. So this is the background for uh, AK Erlane. Okay, so, let, so let's go to the study of uh, Erlang Law System. As I mentioned, is is uh, a, 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 a case is a pioneer in tele, what we call teletraffic engineering, as well as queuing theory, and this work is still used by telecom networks and like telephone system, telephone networks or mobile networks. In addition to that, it may also answer, help to answer some questions on uh, a very uh, important subject today is on the triage of ICU unit, intensive care unit inside a hospital. For example, the management would want to know if I just reduce the patient's spent time in the ICU by just 24 hours, how could I, uh, how could I um, model the, uh, the blocking probability or, or, or the, the um, denial, uh, the probability of denying, denial of service to the patients? So this is uh, unfortunately become a quite quite a subject for today's world. So 
With that, I just move a little bit forward on the content of today's talk. We uh, study early law system, and it can be described by a queuing model called MMNN. Okay, so those are the candle rotations, and uh, N means the number of server. Okay, the second N means there are no queuing space. Okay, and the first M is the arrival process. The second M is the departure process. Both of these I will talk about in the channel traffic characteristics. So let's move forward. The first main traffic characteristics is the arrival process. In the case of telephone uh, arrivals, it can be quite simply described by, or quite accurately described by a uh, Poisson distributions. So what's a Poisson distribution? That is the probability of our core come in during time duration T. Okay, so let me just draw a simple timeline. So I have zero, the time zero. And that is time T. And telephone call come in in an irregular pattern into exchange. So So the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one, the sixth, the seventh, and finally the, the value of oh. Okay, so uh, what I say is how many call out, what's the probability out call in the duration T? So Poisson distribution is also known as a pure chance distribution. And the reason because the variance is equal to the average. And the other point of interest we will look at again is the interarrival time. That is the arrival be time between arrival, second arrival, first arrival, time between the third arrival and the second arrival, time between the fourth, and the third and the fifth and the fourth and so on okay so those are the interval between core that's called interval time so if you look at this uh, distribution it looks something like this in this case this is the uh, lambda t equal to three And the, they are the probability. One thing is interesting is, is the discrete distribution. So you can zero core and the system empty, one core, two core, three core. What's the probability happen? Zero core is about 5%. One core is about 15. Two or three core is about 22, okay? And it then fell off very quickly to almost zero, okay? So for example, probability 12 core coming in during T, uh, lambda T equal to three, is almost zero, okay? So this is the shapes of one Poisson distribution. So the next topics I wanna talk about is called core holding time. Now those are the subscriber or the customer behavior how long they talk for is beyond the control of uh, engineers, but we can measure it, we can model it, and it turned out for te most telephone call, the negative exponential distribution is an accurate, is an accurate way of describing it. Where mu is the, is the uh, departure process, okay? And how do you understand that? One over mu is the average time you speak on the phone, okay? 
So one over mu is the average service time. And the, if you know the average service time, then the inverse is the departure rate. Okay. Now is, uh, is a negative exponential because that reason, minus mu x, okay. Now, if you look at the shapes of that, is simply this, okay, depending on the parameters and have different shapes, but nevertheless, you fall rapidly down. You go down very quickly. The other thing is, it's a continuous distribution. And for example, you could have 1.5. This is the probability density function values on the left. So you have 1.5 second or 1.5 minutes. Okay. So with that, the last traffic intensity we want to look at is A. The reason we are traffic intensity, uh, traffic intensity A. Now, the, the way to see it is simply how many calls come in during one service time. Okay, for a system, a very busy system, of course, the A value become big. Okay. So, and is lambda over multiplied by one over mu. Okay, this is one over mu, and therefore it's lambda on mu. So it's a ratio of arrival process over departure process. So a given number arrival per service time, there's no units associated with this, but given artificial unit, Erlang, named after AK. Okay. So the next one we will quickly look at is called candle rotation. And now in particular, I, I want to talk about this in particular, M, M, N, N, which is the queuing model for Erlang law system. Now, N is number of server. So this is this one here. Okay. And uh, this is the number of waiting space. So, so uh, server plus uh, queue size. Okay, in, in this case, the queue size is equal to zero. So the server number is, is equal to it. That, that's all you have. So there's no, no, buff, no, no uh, waiting space. So what happened is, we'll talk about later, we see a picture, is when a call come in and find all the servers are busy, they leave the system. Okay, so uh, the first uh, M, is for arrival process. Second M is for departure process. M stands for Markovian. That means Poisson arrival process. Give rise to exponential into arrival time as, and, and the Poisson arrival process. And the, is there anything else? Yes, it is. There is fixed constant value deterministics. Okay. And G, anything, but you know something, some parameter values about that distribution. You probably know the first moment, the second moment. Okay. And B is the departure process. Okay. So with that, I can look at the picture of an Erlang loss system. Now, this is the arrival. And that is, the, for example, given by the arrival rate and the departure rate. Okay, so the arrival lambda mu. Okay, and you go into the uh, uh, a selector and say whether it is available facility, available server. Yes. Then you go in to get servers, okay? Not, if if they, all the agents are busy, then the, call, the coming, incoming will be blocked, okay? So what happened now is you go to the agents, you go to the uh, server, and the server finish, and then you leave the system. So early loss formula is give you the proportion 
portion of the core block. Okay, so what we try to find out is when you have 10 core coming in, what portion, how many core will, will not get service because all the servers are busy. Okay, so this is basically the pictures. Uh, in the case here is five server, and if all five servers are busy and you come in, uh, then you will leave the system. Therefore, you, the servers will be denial and the cold block. Okay. So I'll give you the result first and the application. Then we look at the theory afterward. The, in this case, the time congestion is given by this equations. Now this equation um, is a n of n factorial. A is the traffic intensity, n is number of user, a number of servers. Okay, and the in the uh, uh, denominator you have zero to n summation of a i i factorial. Now this is called a uh, time congestion, and time congestion means proportional time the system is busy or when all servers are busy okay so the is probably the manager want to know uh, at busy time how often all my servers are fully occupied and the customer then has to leave the system call congestion means a fractional call that you do not get service so when you make a telephone call and uh if you make 10 telephone calls, how many calls of that 10 calls will not get service? That is the call congestion. Unfortunately, the call congestion and time congestion in the early and low systems are the same. And is that uh, cases where it's different? Yes, when the population size is not large, then you will have a different D value core congestion than uh, time congestions. Okay, the next one I want to show is the applications. Now applications, they are, in the case early and last system, they are three terms. The traffic intensity, the number of user, the number of server, and this E is the E is the uh, um, time congestion. So with that, the first one is you calculate E. So you calculate E. So you given N, you given A. So you want to calculate E. Okay. So you have point uh, seven I Erlang per use per circuit, then you have 48 circuits, so A is equal to 36, so you calculate this. The second one is you calculate A, all right? So you're given the value of N and E requires um, maximum, you will not exceed the performance of 2% time congestion. So what the biggest a, you can have such that uh, that will not exceed the performance of 2% given you have 24 circuits. And uh, turn out to be about 16.6 Erlang. Given the fact 0.1 Erlang per user for a mobile user, then you have 166 user you can accommodate. Now that, in the case of mobile network, that decide the coverage area, okay? And how do you change the coverage by you tuning your antenna, basically, okay? So um, the final one is on, given the E N of A, and you know E, you know A, you want to calculate N, okay? And uh, that is called dimensioning. So that is the part the engineering does, engineers does. The 
want to know how many circuits I need in order to accommodate certain value or traffic intensity uh, for, for a, 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 a particular performance criteria. In this case, it's 1%, 0 0.01, okay? So it has to be less than 0 0.01, and number of circuits which uh, need in order to give 1%, uh, maximum 1% blocking uh, for 20 traffic, 20 early lanes of traffic. Okay, it turned out to be a case of 30 circuits. Now, the next question I want to show you is the, how, how do I uh, calculate the uh, time congestions? Very simple, you just go on the calculator, give, punch out the values you have, okay? But it's a quite, if n is large, it's quite a, a, a long calculation. So they are online calculators. So online calculators, uh, this is an example of an online calculator. Uh, you can Google uh, early loss uh, calculator, then you can find one, anyone. And this one is called earlyin.com calculate slash calculator slash ERLB, stand for early B formula. And the example uh, uh, we, we want is with uh, A is 20, uh, 20, and the 1% blocking probability, how many lines we need in order to make this correct so that do a quick calculation is about is about 30 lines so this as we mentioned so this is an example how how online calculator works so so let's get back to the slides and this is the let's go back quickly and go through the assumption the the theory and we're looking at the uh, a loss system with finite number of user, so n uh, of server with no queue. So, and the other assumption we make is when a call come in and is, and is block deny service, then it will never be turned. Of course, that's not true because we always have repeated call, but for a small value of uh, time congestion, we can always take that into account later on. There's a large number of, of customers, okay? The customer size is greater than the server size by large. And the uh, arrival is uh, pass on. The, the service time is negative exponential. The system is in equilibrium. Okay, so let's go move forward. And this is uh, to, to to arrive at this, we need to understand what's called a Markov chain. Now, Markov chains start with the state. State zero means there are no one in the system. And uh, therefore, all the servers are idle. State one means everyone, there's one server busy. There's one core in the system. So, State N means all the servers are occupied. Okay, now what happened to the next call come in? They find all the servers are occupied. That means T will have to go into, um, T will have to leave the system. It's called uh, deny service. Call with the, call, the, 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 the incoming call will be blocked. Okay, there are two other features I want to talk about. One is the the uh, arrival rate is constant. And why is that constant? Because the uh, number of user, number of customers is much, is very large. So, uh, and having N customers go into the system does not affect the arrival rate too much. The other one is, is a state dependent departure rates. So n mil, three mil, two mil, one mil. The way to understand it is that like a, tele, a, a supermarket, 
if I tell you one counter in the supermarket can serve on average 12 customer per hour. So if you have two counters, then you will have able to serve 24 customers per hour. That's why it's two mil. Okay. So from that, we look at the state transition diagram. I just draw a line here. And what it say is lambda time the probability of P1 is that mean moving forward is about this well is the same as two mu multiplied by probability of p2 okay why is that so because this is the equilibrium moving what happens if they are not equal moving forward is much larger than moving backward but then what happened is the state will be they will all move into the far node state and that means the system is always busy what about the other way around when moving backward is much more uh, higher than moving forward in that case they will they will uh, finally reach the state zero that means they are always empty there are the two extremes okay so with that understanding of the uh, state equations then I, we can just look at the state equations. So I can express P2 uh, in terms of P1, which is okay, and I also express P1 in terms of P0. So if I can find out that is equal to okay. So basically, what I'm saying is you can express p1 in terms p0, p2 in terms p0, and you do the same for p3 and so on. So you know every state probability if you know p0. So that is all it means, okay? You can express PI, you can all express PI in terms of P0. So PI is lambda I over mu I, I factorial, or AI to the power I, I factorial. Okay, so basically you have expressed every state probability in terms of P0. Now the next question is, how do you find out P0? You do this by using a normalization uh, process. What it say is P0 plus P1 plus P2 up to Pn must be equal to one. Okay, that is uh, a probability theorem. And that is give rise to the, the fact that is summation of zero to n of a i i factorial time p0 equal to one. So p0 is given by this, okay? Once you get p0 given by this, so p0 just given by this expression, okay? And then, as I said, the Pi can be expressed in terms of P0. So with that, you can express any term in terms of P0 because we know what P0 is now. And this is the general expression for any term within the uh, Markov chain. Okay, so uh, this is called a truncated Poisson distribution. What happens is when n go to infinite, the this term become e to the minus a. Okay. Now, if the term 
in the car congestion is given by when the J term become the, the last term in the state uh, transition diagram that is when J equal to N, then that is the Erlang loss formula. Okay, that is a probability you have all N server occupy. Okay, so that is the part we want to derive. Okay, so uh, although EN of A is calculated for this queuing model, and but it's turned out to be good for any other distributions, is insensitive to the shapes of the service time. So it's not necessary negative exponential at any vector exponential, well, any uh, uh, shape, any distribution. The only thing sensitive to is the average service time. So that is good. I mean, that is allow us to utilize the MM and, and the Erlang law system more extensively. So with that, we come to a second last slide. So what happened is we know the Erlang loss probability, and you have the pure chance traffic, A, so you have lambda mu, and then you are going to N circuits. The carry traffic by this N circuit is A times the, the complement, one minus EN of A. The loss traffic is just A times EN of A. Okay, so the final conclusion is, final concluding remark is, is this, what did we learn? We learned time and core congestion using Erlang loss system. It's based on MNNNQ, which we derive Erlang loss system from. The same result can be used if the service time is generally distributed. And it's only, the only thing we need to know is the average service time. Are they accurate? Are they useful? If the assumption is true, is accurate, very simple result, online calculators and so on. Now, if the waiting space, the buffer size approaching infinite, then you have MNNQ, okay? And if it's a finite size, is you have this Q uh, with, N, with N, 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 plus, N plus Q, okay? So N plus Q. Now, uh, we, we, I have talked about MNQ in another online uh, lecture. So if you're interested, you can look for it. And the, uh, the, that's called delay system, multi-server delay system. And uh, I will go in the future and talk about a finite population size. What about if the assumption is wrong? For example, the arrival is not a Poisson arrival. Then, of course, the early law system it will be inaccurate. But let's still provide a reference. Okay, what other method you can use when the arrival is not possible? It's very simple going to do some simulation which require more effort and more time to do it. And the early loss formula give you very quick results if, you, if the assumption is correct and you have correct answer. Okay, with that remarks, I finished the talk today. So thank you very much for your time. So bye-bye.